Hi, time yet again for another video that has to do with Wi-Fi video door cameras and your Newtone Chime and or intercom system. Since the last few videos, I've gotten contacted by a lot of people. In the original source video for this topic, the one that I show how to connect a Google Nest Wi-Fi video camera to your Newtone intercom system or electronic Chime, which I'll put a one of those tag things that pops up right in here somewhere so you can see that. I hooked it up through a little isolation relay. And then the next video I showed a little relay board assembly that we had made. And then in the third video, a more refined relay rectifier board assembly that you actually can call and order. In the original source video, I included links in that video's description of a place online that you can order the relay and the rectifier that you can use to build one like what I built. I've had a lot of people contact me because they order the parts and they don't know how to hook it up and they don't understand how all of this goes and what the pins are for and there's a lot of confusion about that. So I thought I would make another video that explains how this works and how you approach this and show you how you can hook it up if you want to build your own. So here's our relay and here's our rectifier assembly. What you can do when you order electronic components like these or any other kind online, the manufacturer will have for you free of charge that you can download or look at anytime you want to, something called a data sheet. So let's put those tiny things aside and let's take a look at the data sheets. So these I just printed it offline. These are for this relay and this rectifier. So this one, this is the relay. It's made by TE Connectivity. It's one that we use on lots of different products. It's used in Newtone Intercom systems. And a data sheet is basically all of the technical specifications as to what the component is and how it works and what you can do with it. A lot of this is meaningless to you. The part, the part that's important is down here on page two. You have a drawing and it's called out as the terminal assignment and the diagram shows which terminals on the bottom of the relay are connected to different things inside. Of course, for those of you who don't do this every day, this might as well be Chinese because you don't know what it means. Likewise, the other data sheet is for the rectifier. That's this one. And if we look through this, here's a diagram. We have the package outline dimensions and it shows the size of it. And here is a drawing and it shows what each of the four terminal connections are. And that way you can figure out how to hook it up. All of this kind of information is all available online free. It's just a data sheet. So for whatever part you're buying, you search for a data sheet for it. The manufacturer gives them away freely because they want you to use their parts and you need to know the technical specifications. That's how you do it. Since this is hard to read and this is really small, let's see if we can improve on this so I can explain it to you more clearly. Here on the whiteboard, we have a jumbo size relay and we have an extra jumbo size rectifier. How about that? These are taken directly from the information and the drawings on the data sheet. Now I will point out at this point, if you're using some other brand of relay, some other kind of relay, something that's totally different, you're using a different kind of rectifier, although they're all fundamentally the same, whatever it is, please don't email me and say, I bought this other kind of Ajax relay and I don't understand how to hook it up. Can you please tell me? If you're going to make a change that's different than what I recommend, then it's your project and it's on you. Find a data sheet, figure out what it means and figure out how to hook it up. So let's look at our rectifier first since that's the first thing on your rectifier relay board. Your rectifier is drawn very simply. It's mostly a circle with a flat side on it that corresponds with the shape of the actual device itself. And what you'll see printed on the surface of the device is this. You have a squiggly line, another squiggly line, a plus and a minus. The squiggly lines represent AC voltage. That's the AC power coming in from your Wi-Fi video door camera power moduli thing that you're going to connect in theory to a doorbell, but in this case you're connecting it to a little relay board. 
So your AC connections are one squiggly line and the other squiggly line and the corresponding legs on the rectifier. No, it does not make any difference which wires you connect to which squiggly lines because AC power doesn't care. The other markings on the rectifier are a plus and a minus. That's your DC power. See, we have here, we have squiggly line is AC and plus and minus is DC. You have outputs of plus and minus. It's changed the AC into DC and the DC is what we're gonna to use to power the coil in our relay. In this particular application, it, the, the relay and the coil that's in it does not care which way you hook up the plus and minus. It doesn't make any difference. In many, many, many electronic circuits, it makes a huge, huge, huge difference on how you hook up the plus and the minus. But for this simple little circuit where we're just activating a relay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't care. It doesn't make any difference. So let's look at our giant jumbo size relay because it truly is jumbo by comparison. This is right out of the, the data sheet drawing. And what does this show? So what this shows is there are five pin connections on the bottom of the relay. And although this will be really hard to see, there are five little legs on the bottom of the relay. And this is drawn as if you were setting it on its side or upside down, just like this. These two connections are the coil that energize the relay. The little squiggly sawtooth line denotes a resistor, which is what a coil is, and that's where your DC power will be connected. The other three terminals are the switching terminals. This one down here on the bottom is the common terminal, and that's the one that actually moves when the relay is energized. Then up here, we have two other contacts because this type of relay can either be normally open or normally closed. The normal position is the position that the relay is in when the coil is not energized. It's when the relay is at rest, when it's turned off. And this particular relay, when it's turned off, there's already a connection between the common terminal and this terminal up here on the corner. You can see the brown line and it's actually touching the end of the brown arrow from this connection. So in its at rest position, when it's not energized, when it's turned off, this connect contact and this contact are already closed. When you energize the coil, the common contact, this angled one, is going to flip and it's gonna move over and touch this brown arrow instead, therefore connecting this terminal and this terminal. Since the purpose of this rectifier relay board is to activate a device, what we want is we want the connections on the relay. When the coil is energized, it moves the switching contact so this one and this one are connected. So let's draw write this out so you'll understand how to do this. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give each terminal a number because that will make it easier. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, and five because that seems like the most logical, reasonable way to do it. Left to right, bottom to top, works really well for me. So what are we gonna do? What we're gonna do is first we're gonna connect our rectifier to our coil. And it's very simple. We're gonna have wires, or you do it on a little circuit board, or you just wire it point to point. However you decide to connect it up, we're gonna take a wire from the minus, and we're gonna take it around, and we're gonna hook it up to terminal number one, and we're gonna take a wire from the plus, and we're gonna take it around, and we're gonna hook it up to terminal number two. When the rectifier gets the AC power from the Wi-Fi video moduli thing, it will feed that AC power into the rectifier. The rectifier will turn it into DC and it will send it down the wires to the coil in the relay, energizing it, which causes the common contact to flip. So instead of being at the at rest position, it's gonna move and it's gonna to touch 
the right hand arrow. The connections that we're going to make for our doorbell push button. So I guess I could have drawn a push button in, but I didn't. So let's draw it in right now. So here's our push button. And this is the push button that is connected to your Newtone electronic doorbell, or it's connected to the electronic chime that's built into your Newtone intercom system. The one that you walk up and push with your finger and it rings. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna make connections between the switching contacts on the relay to the back of the push button. It's very simple. So we're gonna do those in blue. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take one wire from contact number three, the common contact of the relay. I'm going to take it around and connect it to one screw on the back of the push button. And then we're going to take another wire from terminal number five, and we're going to take that around and connect it to the other screw on the back of the push button. Now our circuit is complete. When your Wi-Fi video module power thing is energized, it sends AC power to the AC terminals on the rectifier. The rectifier turns it into DC voltage. The DC voltage goes to the coil in the relay. It energizes the coil. It causes the common contact to flip to the right, which will draw in this way as a dashed line like that. It moves to the right, making a connection between three and five, which is tied to the, the screws on the back of the push button, so it acts just like someone pushing the button. That's all there is to it. That's how you hook it up. I hope you found this interesting, and perhaps for some of you it will be helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up on YouTube, because that helps us a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage. Click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.